The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Okay, so uh, welcome back, everybody. <coughs> uh, welcome back to AO3. Uh, today, we are going to uh, continue the discussion of the harmonic oscillators. And also, we will add damping force into the game and see what will happen. Okay? So this is actually what we have learned last time from this slide. Uh, we have analyzed the physics of a harmonic oscillator which we actually demonstrated last time, and you can see the device still there. And Hooke's law, actually the Hooke's law is actually far more general than what we saw before. It works for all small oscillations around about a point of uh, equilibrium uh, position, okay? And uh, that, is a, that can be demonstrated by multiple different uh, kind of physical systems. For example, here I have uh, a mass which is actually uh, can only move along this track here. And if I put this mass set free, and this thing is actually exercising uh, harmonic oscillation. Okay? We can do this with large amplitude. We can also do it with small amplitude. And you see that, huh, really, it works. Hooke's law actually works, and it predicts exactly the same motion as what you see on the slide, okay? And we also have a little bit more complicated system. For example, this is actually uh, some kind of rod, and you can actually fix one point and then make it oscillate. And you see that, huh, it also does some kind of harmonic oscillation. But now what is actually the oscillating is the amplitude. Uh, the amplitude is actually the angle with respect to the, to the downward direction. And finally, this is actually the, up, the, the vertical version of this uh, spring mass system, which you will, you will be uh, analyzing that in your, your P set. And you see that, huh, you actually oscillate up and down harmonically. So that's all very nice. And uh, we also have learned one thing which is very, very interesting, is that complete, uh, a complex uh, exponential is actually a pretty beautiful way to present the solution. And you will see uh, it works also uh, in describing the damped oscillators. And we will, we will see uh, how it works uh, in the lecture today. Uh, I received uh, several questions uh, during my office hour. And, and through email or Piazza, uh, there were some confusions about um, um, uh, doing a tidal expansion. Okay, so in uh, in the lecture last time, uh, the equilibrium position is at x equal to zero. Therefore, I do tidal expansion around zero. Okay, but in this case, if the equilibrium position or the minima of the potential is at x equal to l. Then what you need to do is to do a Tyler expansion around x equal to L, okay? Just to make that really, really clear, okay? Okay, I hope that will help you uh, with the PSET uh, question. Okay, so let's get started immediately. So let's continue the discussion of the, uh, the equation of motion we arrived last time. So we have n x double dot, and this is equal to minus k x, okay? That is actually the formula from last time. And we can actually calculate the kinetic energy of this uh, spring uh, mass system. And basically, we will arrive, this is going to be equal to one, 1 over 2 m times x dot squared. Okay, and we can also calculate the potential energy of the, of the spring, potential energy.
and that is equal to one half k x squared. We also know what would be the total energy. The total energy will be a sum of the kinetic energy and the potential. Basically, you get this formula, 1 half n x dot squared plus 1 half k x squared. From last time, we have solved this equation of motion, right? So the, the solution we got is x equal to uh, a cosine omega 0 t plus phi, while omega 0 is equal to square root of k over m. Therefore, we can actually calculate what would be the, the total energy as a function of time, right? So if we calculate that, you'll get e will be equal to 1 over 2 n a square omega 0 square sine square omega 0 t plus phi. So this is actually the first term, OK, here. Plus 1 over 2 k a square cosine square omega 0 t plus phi. OK? And we also know that this, this term, this actually coefficient here is just k a square, right? Because omega 0 uh, is actually equal to square root of k over m. And you, if you replace this omega 0 uh, square uh, by, by k over n, then you actually arrive k a square, OK? So that is actually very good. So that means I can simplify the total energy. And what we are going to get is 1 over 2 k a squared. I can take this factor out. And that will give me, inside this uh, bracket, I will get sine squared omega 0 t plus phi plus cosine squared omega 0 t plus phi. And this is actually equal to 1, right? Just a reminder, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is always equal to 1. So that gives me this result. This is actually 1 over 2 k a squared. OK, so that is actually the result. What does that mean? That means if I actually pull this mass harder, OK, so that the initial d it has larger amplitude, then the total energy is actually proportional to amplitude squared. Okay? So I am storing more and more energy. If I increase the, temp uh, increase the amplitude uh, even more, then I am storing the energy in this system, and it's proportional to a squared. And also, if the spring constant is larger, the same amplitude will give you more energy. So that means that uh, you can store more energy if you have larger spring constant. Okay? The most surprising thing is that actually, this is actually a constant, right? What does that mean? The total energy is actually not varying as a function of time. You see? So total energy is conserved, okay? So you can see from this slide, the total energy is actually shown as the uh, sum, which is the green uh, curve. And the kinetic energy and potential energy are shown as red and the blue curves. Okay, you can see that their energy, the total energy is actually constant. But this system is very dynamical, you see? So the energy is actually going back and forth between the spring and the mass, OK? As in, in the form of kinetic energy and the, in the form of potential energy. But they are doing this so well, such that the sum is actually a constant. So energy is actually conserved, OK? So that is actually pretty beautiful and, uh, and uh, uh, can be described by very well uh, by this mathematics. Any questions from here?
Okay, so I would like to say simple harmonic motion, actually what you are going to get is the energy is actually conserved and independent of the time. And uh, later you will see an example with damping and uh, you will see that energy conservation is now no longer the case, okay? So let's immediately uh, jump to another example, uh, which is actually uh, involving simple harmonic motion. So let's take this uh, rod and uh, 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 a nail system um, as an example. If I actually uh, slightly move this rod, and uh, then I release that, then it was uh, actually, uh, uh, you will see a simple harmonic motion. Okay, also from the system. So that's actually do the calculation uh, as another example. So this is actually my system. I have this rod, okay. Uh, now I assume that the, 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 the mass is actually uniformly distributed on this rod and it's nailed on the wall, okay. And uh, the, the length of this, this rod is actually the L. So that means the center of mass is actually at L over two with respect to the, the nail, okay? And uh, also this whole system is set up on, the, on Earth, right? Therefore, there will be gravitational force pointing downward, okay? So that means you have gravitational force Fg pointing downward, okay? So this is actually the system which I would like to understand. And the, just a reminder, what are we going to do afterward in order to turn the whole system into a language which we now describe the nature? What, is going to, what, what are we going to do? Anybody? We are, going to, we are going to define the coordinate system, right? So that I can translate everything into mathematics, right? So that's actually what we are always uh, doing, and you will see that we are always doing this uh, um, in this class. Okay, so how, what is actually the coordinate system which I would like to use? Since this system is going to be, ro be rotating back and forth, okay? Therefore, I would like to define theta to be the angle with respect to an uh, axis, which is actually pointing downward, okay? So the origin of this coordinate system is theta equal to zero. This means that I'm pointing, that, okay, the, the, the rod is actually pointing downward, okay? And also, I need to define what is actually the positive uh, what, what is actually the positive uh, value of the theta, right? So I define anti-clockwise direction to be positive, okay? So it is actually important to say, to, to actually first define that, then actually, uh, then actually uh, to translate everything into mathematics, okay? So the initial condition is the following. So I, I actually move this thing, rotate this thing slightly, then I, I actually release that really carefully without introducing any initial velocity, okay? Therefore, I have two initial conditions. Okay, at t equal to zero, there are two uh, initial conditions. The first one is theta, equal to, uh, theta zero is equal to theta initial. The second condition is the same as what we have uh, been doing last time. The initial velocity or angular velocity is actually equal to zero. So that gives you theta dot equal to zero, okay? Now, we have actually uh, defined uh, the, the coordinate system. Then, now we can actually um, uh, uh, um, uh, draw a force diagram. Right? so that we can actually use the, our knowledge about the physics and uh, to obtain the equation of motion, right? So now the force diagram looks like this. Let's 
So this is actually the center of mass of this uh, rod. And uh, you have a force pointing downward, which is due to the gravitational uh, force. Fg is equal to Ng, okay? It's pointing downward, okay? The magnitude is actually uh, uh, equal to Ng. And, uh, and also, we, we know the R vector. This vector have a length of L over 2. It's pointing from the central mass of this rod to the, to the nail, OK? And also, we know the angle between this vector pointing from the central mass to the nail and the vertical direction, which we have already defined, which is actually called theta. Therefore, now we can actually calculate what will be the, the torque. Tau will be equal to this R, R vector, cross the force, the total force acting on the, the central mass. In this case, it says just Fg. OK? So now we can actually write this down explicitly. Since the whole system is actually rotating on a single plane, right? So there's only one plane this uh, rod is sitting on, and uh, it's actually going back and forth only in, on, on this plane, OK? Therefore, actually, I can drop all the uh, arrows and uh, write it down. The, the magnitude of the tau directly, and this will be equal to minus ng L over 2 sine theta of t. OK, any questions so far? OK, so now we have the torque, and we can you make use rotational version of Newton's law to obtain the equation of motion, right? So that should be pretty straightforward. Tau will be equal to I, which is mo the moment of inertia of the system, and times alpha t, OK? And uh, just for, for your information, I already calculated the, the I for you. I is equal to one third and L squared, OK? So you can actually go back home and uh, actually do a check to see if I am telling the truth. And if you trust me, and that's the, an the, uh, the answer, which is actually 1 over 3. And L squared, if the uh, mass is actually uniformly distributed uh, on this rod, OK? So that will give me uh, minus NGL. Uh, divided by 2, sine theta t. OK, so that is actually coming from, from, from this side, OK? So now I can actually simplify this expression. I can now plug in the i value into this equation, and I will get 1 over 3 and L squared theta double dot t, which is actually alpha. OK, I now write it as a theta double dot. And that will be equal to minus ngl over 2 sine theta. OK? I can move all the constant to the right-hand side. Therefore, I get theta double dot t. This is equal to minus ngl. OK, uh, sorry. I can actually already simplify this, right? This actually cancel, and y, one of the L actually cancel. So therefore, I get minus 3g over 2 sine theta t. OK, as usual, we actually define a, 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 a omega to replace this, con uh, this constant to make our life easier. So I can now define omega 0 equal to square root of 
3g over 2l, OK? And that will give you t dot double dot of t equal to minus omega 0 square sine theta p. Any questions so far? A lot of calculation, but they should be uh, all pretty straightforward. And actually, we are done. No? We are done because we have the equation of motion, and the rest of the job is to just solve it. So this is actually now the, the problem of the math department. So can anybody actually tell me the solution of the theta of t? Anybody? Of course, you have to approximate it. Yeah, that's very really unfortunate. <laughs> So the, look, now we are facing a very difficult situation. We don't know how to solve this equation in front of you. I, I don't know, OK? Of course, you can actually solve it with a computer, OK? Or you want to go fancy, solve it with your cell phone if it doesn't explode. Um, but it's not really nice to do this in front of you in, in the country. You know, we don't learn too much. Okay. So what are we going to do? So what we can do is actually to consider a special case. So we know that this equation of motion is exact. Okay? So if you solve it, it will describe the motion of this, uh, this uh, rod the motion of this, uh, this thing, even with large angle, it works, OK? And now, in order to actually to show you the math in, in the class, therefore, I actually, I will do a small approximation. So actually, I, I will only work on the, the case that when the amplitude is very small and see what is going to happen. So now I'm considering a special case. Up to now, everything is exact. And now I'm now going to a special case. C top t goes to 0, OK? Then we can actually uh, get this sine C top t is roughly C top t, OK? Based on the Tyler expansion, you can actually verify this, OK? So in this case, uh, if we take theta equal to 1 degree, OK, then the ratio of the sine theta and the theta is actually equal to 99.99%, which is very good. If I take it as 5, 5%, then I get 99, uh, sorry, uh, at 5 degree, OK, and it's actually 99.9%. Even at 10 degree, OK, it's actually 99.5%. That shows you that sine theta is so close to theta. OK, we are pretty safe because uh, the difference is smaller than 1%. OK, so that's very nice. After this approximation, OK, I get my final equation of motion, theta double dot t equal to minus omega 0 square theta t. Just a reminder, omega 0 is equal to square root of 3g over 2l. OK? We have solved this equation in the last time, last lecture, right? It's exactly the same. OK, it happened to be exactly the same. Therefore, I know the solution will be theta over t equal to a cosine omega 0 t plus 5. From the initial conditions, which I have 1 and the 2, OK, I, I'm not going to go over this uh, calculation again. But again, we can actually plug in 1 and 2 to solve the unknown, a and the 5. If you do this exercise, you will conclude that um, a is equal to theta initial, and uh, phi is equal to 
zero. OK? So what the full solution will be C tau of t equal to a. OK, so a is now replaced by C tau initial cosine omega 0 t. You can see that this actually works for this system. Simple harmonic oscillation actually uh, describes uh, the, 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 uh, the, the motion of this system as a function of time. You can also see a few more examples shown here. Two of them you are going to actually work on uh, in your P set, and also uh, another one involving circuit. If you have a, a capacitor and you have an inductor, actually the, the current, the size of the current, is also doing a simple harmonic motion. Okay? And uh, as we actually discussed before, the energy is always conserved and uh, is actually stored in different components of the systems, okay? So we have done this. What is actually new uh, today? What we are going to do today is that's actually observe this phenomena here. So this thing is actually going to go back and forth, but it's actually not going to do that forever, right? Something is happening, which actually slow the motion down. I can also make use of this system, okay? I start from, from here, and I'm not worried uh, that this actually goes out of, the, uh, of this track because I know for sure it will stop there. Why? Because the initial amplitude, okay, is not going to, okay, so the amplitude is not going to be larger than the initial amplitude, right? So I'm not worried at all, okay? But you can see that the amplitude is changing as a function of time. Apparently, something is missing, and that is actually a drag force or, or friction, which is actually not including in our, included in our calculation. So that actually try to make the calculation more realistic and see what is going to happen. So now I will introduce a drag force. Okay, which I should introduce a torque tau drag T, which is equal to minus B. B is actually some kind of constant, which is given to you. Theta dot T, which is actually proportional to the angular velocity of that rod, okay? And also, of course, I keep the original approximation. The theta is very small, such that I don't have to deal with the integration of sine theta. Okay, so solving this theta double dot equal to minus omega zero squared sine theta, this uh, complicated function. Okay, you may ask, why do I actually introduce a drag force proportional to the velocity? Okay, and why, why do we put a minus sign there? Okay, that is actually because if you have a minus sign, okay, that means when this mass or that rod is actually, for example, it's actually going downward, then the drag force is really dragging it because it's actually in the opposite direction of the velocity of the, the mass or uh, the angular velocity of the rod, okay? So I need a minus sign there. Okay, otherwise I'm, it's not a drag force anymore, it's actually accelerating the whole thing, okay? Secondly, why is that, why do I choose that to be proportional to theta dot or, or velocity, okay? There's really no much deeper reason. I choose this form because I can actually solve it in front of you. Okay, the reality is actually between uh, proportional to theta dot and the theta dot square, for example, okay? This is actually a model which I introduced here, which I can actually solve it in front of you, okay? 
on the other hand, you will see that it's actually not bad at all. Okay, it actually works and that describe uh, the, the system which we actually will uh, perform the demo here. Okay, and uh, w once we have introduced this, okay, the equational motion will be modified. Okay, so let's come back to the equation of motion. So you have theta double dot, T originally will be equal to tau total T divided by I, okay? And now this will become tau T plus tau drag. T divided by I. There's additional term here, okay? If I simplify this whole equation, then I get minus ng L over two, okay, sines theta, and this is actually roughly theta, okay, minus B theta dot divided by one third of M L squared, okay? So you can see that I, I, I still make this approximation sine theta roughly equal to theta, okay? Then I can actually arrive this equation in a small angle case, okay? I get minus 3g over 2l theta t minus 3b over ml squared theta dot t. Okay, and now I, as usual, I define omega zero square equal to 3g over 2L, and I can also define uh, gamma is equal to 3B over ML square. Okay, just to make my life easier, right? Finally, we will arrive this expression theta double dot plus gamma theta dot plus omega zero square theta, and that is equal to zero. So what you can see from here is that we have actually arrived and uh, derived the uh, equation of motion Okay, we have described the equation of motion. And what is actually the, uh, the rest part of the work is actually really just solve this equation of motion. And you don't really have to solve it because you already get the result from 1803 actually, if you remember. And we are going to discuss the result. But before that, before I really try to solve this equation, I would like to take a vote Okay, so here I have two different, two systems, okay? They have equal amount of mass, okay? They are attached to a spring, okay? If you do the, the same equation of motion derivation, you will actually get exactly the same uh, solution, uh, uh, sorry, exactly the same equation of motion in, uh, in that form, format, okay? So the, the form of the equation of motion will be the same between this system and that system, okay? I would like to ask you a question about the oscillation frequency. So you can see that one, one of them is actually a bad mass, it's like a point-like particle, and the other one wearing a hat, okay? What is going to happen is that this uh, Mexican hat is going to be <laughs> Uh, trying to push the air away, right? Then you may think, okay, this Mexican thing is not really very important. Therefore, the oscillation frequency may be the same, right? How many of you think the oscillation frequency, if I actually try to perturb these two systems, will be the same? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we have 11. So the omega, the predict omega, will be equal to omega zero, 11 of you. How many of you 
we think that, okay, because of this hat, okay, this pushing this air away, you know, it's a lot of work to be done, right? Therefore, this is going to slow down the oscillation. How many of you think that is going to happen? One, two, three. Okay, 17. Okay. It may, it may happen to you that you think this idea of you know, wearing a head is really fashionable. You know? Therefore, it got really exciting and uh, it actually faster. Can that happen? How many of you actually think that is going to happen? Okay. One. You think so? Two. Very good. We have two. What, what do you think? What are the rest? <laughs> so on the, on the uh, 20, 30 of you actually think that is going to happen. Okay. All the rest think, all the rest of the class think that this is going to disappear. <laughs> to the moon, okay? So that is actually the opinion, and we have completed the poll. And what we are we going to do is that we are going to solve this system and see what is going to happen. And we will do the experiment in front of you, okay? All right, so that's very nice. So now we have this equation of motion, and uh, now I will pretend that I'm from the math department so for a bit and uh, help you guide you through the, the solution. So now I can use this trick, okay, the theta. I can actually say theta is actually the real part of the z is a complex uh, function. And as we learned before, z, t, and I assume that to be exponential i alpha t. So alpha is actually some kind of constant, which we, I, I don't really know what is the constant yet, okay? Now I, I can now actually write the equation of motion, okay, in the form of z. Then basically what I get is z double dot t plus gamma z dot t plus omega zero square z of t, and this is equal to zero, okay? So remember, exponential function cannot be killed by differentiation, right? Therefore, it's really convenient. You can see from here. Now I can plug in this expression, which I, I did uh, some guess, and to, to this uh, equation uh, of motion. Then what I am going to get is minus alpha squared, okay? Because I, you take i alpha i alpha out of this uh, 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 exponential function, right? Because you do, do a double differentiation, okay? So you get minus alpha square plus i gamma alpha, right? Because this is only uh, differentiated one time, plus omega zero square, and uh, that is actually, uh, all, all those things actually is multiplying this exponential function, exponential i alpha t equal to zero, okay? So we will write this expression. That is very nice. And uh, we also know that this expression is going to be valid all the time. No matter what, what t you put in, it should be valid, right? Because this is the equation of motion. And uh, we hope that this solution uh, will survive this test, right? Okay? So I can easily conclude that this one it is actually not equal to zero, okay? It can be some value, not zero. So what is actually equal to zero? This first term is actually equal to zero, okay? Therefore, I can now solve this uh, uh, equation, minus alpha squared plus i gamma alpha plus omega zero squared equal to zero. I can solve it, okay? If I do that, then I will get alpha is equal to i gamma plus 
plus minus square root of four omega zero square minus gamma square divided by two. This is actually a second order uh, polynomial, uh, uh, and you can actually, uh, and that is actually equal to zero, therefore you can actually solve it easily, and this is actually the solution. And uh, I can write it down in a slightly different form, i gamma over two plus minus square root of omega zero square minus gamma square over four. Okay, any questions so far? Am I going too fast? No? Everything is okay? Okay. So, you can see that alpha is equal to this expression, and I would like to consider a situation where omega zero is much, much larger than gamma, okay? That means, just a reminder of what is gamma, okay? Maybe you, you got already a, a bit confused. What is gamma? Gamma is related to the strength of the drag force, right? It's actually 3B over ML squared, okay? B is actually giving you uh, the partial, uh, okay? The, it's actually determining the size of the drag force, okay? So I would like to consider a situation the first situation is if omega zero square is larger than gamma square over four, okay? So in that uh, limit, uh, sorry, in that case, the drag force, okay, is small, okay? It's not huge, okay, it's small, okay? If that is the case, this is actually real. Right? Because omega zero square is larger than gamma square over four, therefore this is real, okay? So now I can actually define omega square, define that as omega zero square minus gamma square over four, okay? And this will become, and this will become I gamma over two plus minus omega. Okay? So that means I will have two solutions coming from this uh, exercise. Z plus of T is equal to exponential minus gamma over two T exponential I omega T. Okay, and the Z minus, the second solution, okay, if I take uh, one of the plus sign and one of the minus sign solution, then uh, the second solution will be exponential minus I gamma over 2T exponential minus I omega T. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so we would like to go back to theta, right? So, so what would be the theta? So that means I will have a theta one of t, which is actually taking the real part, sorry, theta plus, maybe, okay? Taking the real part of the uh, z plus, and that will give you exponential minus gamma over two t cosine omega t, okay? I'm just plugging in the, the solution to this equation, okay? Theta minus t will be equal to exponential minus gamma over two t sine omega t, okay? Finally, the, the full solution of theta of t will be a linear combination of these two solutions, right? Therefore, you will get theta of t equal to exponential minus gamma over 2t. A is some kind of constant times cosine 
omega t plus b sine omega t. OK? And of course, from the last uh, time, as you will know, that this can also be written as a cosine omega t plus phi. OK? Any questions so far? OK, very good. So we have actually already solved this uh, equation. And of course, uh, we can actually practice in back into this equation of motion. And you will see that it really works. And I'm not going to do that now, but you can actually go back home and check. And uh, if you believe me, it works. And also at the same time, it got two undetermined constant. Since this is a second order differential equation, therefore, ha, huh, this thing actually works, have two arbitrary constant, therefore that is actually the one and the only one solution in the universe which satisfy the equation of motion, or satisfy that equation, uh, equation uh, differential equation, okay? So this thing actually have dramatical consequences. The first thing which we learn is that as a function of time, what is going to happen? Okay, the amplitude is now becoming exponential minus ga uh, gamma over 2t times a. This is actually the amplitude. The amplitude is decreasing exponentially. So that is actually the first prediction coming from this exercise, okay? The second prediction is that this thing is still oscillating because it got the cosine omega t plus phi there. You see? So the resulting motion is going to be like uh, going up and down, up and down, and uh, go to get tired. Therefore, the amplitude becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. And, but it's never zero, right? It's never zero, OK? It's actually going to be oscillating down. So small, I couldn't see it, but it's still oscillating, OK? Finally, we actually have also the answer to the original question we posed, OK? So now you can see that the oscillation frequency is omega, OK? Originally, before we introduce the drag force, omega zero, which is the oscillation frequency, is actually the angular frequency is actually square root of 3g over 2 L. And you can see that the omega, okay, the, the new omega, the oscillation frequency with drag force, is actually the omega zero square, square root of this, omega zero square minus gamma square over 4. So the, what this test sheet tells us is that this is going to be smaller, right? Because of the drag force, OK? So that's the prediction, OK? Let's do the experiment and see what is going to happen. So let's take a look at these two systems. They have the identical mass, which uh, our instructor, uh, technical instructor actually carefully prepared. OK, they have the same mass, even though one is actually look a bit funny. The other one looks normal, OK? Now what I'm going to do is to really try and, uh, and see which one is actually oscillating faster, OK? So let's see. I release them at the same time. And you, see, you can see that originally they seem to be oscillating at the same frequency. But you can see very clearly that the one with uh, the hat is actually oscillating slower. OK, so you can see that, OK, uh, 17 of you actually have the correct answer, uh, got the correct answer. And the, the, the most important thing is that you can see that this simple mass actually describe and predict what is going to happen in my little experiment. So that is actually really cool. And uh, I think it's time to take a little break, and then we will com come back and. Uh, and uh, look at other solutions. And of course, you are welcome to come 
uh, to the front to play with uh, those demonstrations. Um, so there are two uh, small issues uh, which uh, were, were raised uh, by, uh, uh, during the break. So the first one is that if you actually calculate the torque okay, from, this, uh, uh, from this equation, so I, I made the mistake. The R vector should be actually pointing from the, the nail to the center of mass. Okay? So I think that's a trivial uh, mistake. So if you do this, okay, then you, you can actually calculate the tau equal to R cross F, uh, then you actually get uh, this minus sign, okay? So, so if, I, if I make a mistake and pointing uh, to, toward the nail, okay, then you will get no minus sign, okay? Then that doesn't work, really work, okay? So, so very good, I, I'm very happy that you are actually paying very much attention to capture those. Uh, the, the second issue is that Okay, so now I'm saying that, okay, now I, I have the solution in the complex uh, for, format, so I, can, I have the Z plus and I have the Z minus, okay? And uh, then I would like to go to the real uh, world, right? Because uh, imaginary thing is actually hidden in some kind of you know, motion in the extra dimension and et cetera. I would like to go back to reality, okay? And, uh, and the, what I, I said in, in the class is that I take the real part of one of the solution, and I, I, I can also take the real part of uh, I times uh, one of the solution. But of course, you can also do uh, this by doing a linear combination of the solution, right? As we uh, actually discussed last time, linear combination of the solutions is also a solution uh, to this, the same e equation of motion, right? Since this one is actually linear, Therefore, um, what I actually do is actually to, uh, uh, to sum the two solutions, z plus and z minus, and it divided by two, or actually uh, I, I can actually uh, do a minus i over two times z plus minus uh, z, uh, z minus, okay? Then I can also extract this sign term here, okay? So that, is actually, that should be the correct explanation of the, the, the two solutions uh, in the in a real axis, okay? Any questions so far? So thank you very much for, for capturing those. Okay, so, so now you can see that we have been uh, discussing the equation of motion of this functional form, and the one thing which is really, really uh, interesting is that uh, the solution, uh, when we take a small drag force limit, actually we arrive a beautiful solution looks like this, A exponential uh, minus uh, gamma over 2t cosine omega t plus phi that actually predict the oscillation, okay? At the same time, it also says that the amplitude is actually going to drop exponentially, but never zero, okay? Finally, uh, we also know that this solution actually tells us that uh, if we have a spring mass system oscillating up and down, if we have uh, a rod like what we actually solve in, 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 a, in a class, uh, this object is going to pass through zero, the equilibrium position, infinite number of times, right? Because the, the cosine is always there. Therefore, uh, although the amplitude becomes very small, but it's still oscillating forever until the end of the universe, okay? All right, so that's actually what we have learned. And also, one thing which we learned last time is that a simple harmonic motion, okay, like this one, which we are showing here, or this one, which is actually a mass oscillating back and forth on the track, is actually just a projection of a, of a circular motion, right, in the complex plane. Okay, and what we are really seeing here in front of uh, uh, in front of you is actually a projection to the real axis. Okay, so that's actually really remarkable result and a beautiful picture. And of course, we can actually also plug in the solution with damping. So what is actually the picture in this language in the, in this exactly the same language? Uh, if we actually follow the, the, the locus, then basically what you are going to see is that 
this thing actually spiral, okay, and the amplitude is actually getting smaller and smaller, and they sucked into this uh, black hole in the zero zero. Okay, so so you can see that now the the the, the picture looks as if there is something really rotating in the complex plane, and it's actually approaching zero because the amplitude is actually getting smaller and smaller, but this whole thing is still rotating. Okay? Okay, that's pretty nice. All right. So now, this is actually a special case when we actually assume that uh, gamma is actually uh, pretty small. So you have very small drag force, okay? Um, so that's actually, check what will happen. If I now start to increase the drag force, make this head larger, larger, and larger, okay? Introducing more and more drag, okay? What is going to happen, okay? So now I consider the situation, the second situation, omega zero square equal to gamma square over four, okay? Okay, so when, when the gamma is very small, what we see is that this is actually under damped, right? So, so the, the damping is really small, but if I increase the gamma to a critical value, now omega zero square happened to be equal to gamma square over four, okay? I call this critically damped. Oscillator. Okay. So what does that mean? That means omega is equal to zero. You see? This is our definition of omega, right? If omega zero equal a uh, square equal to gamma square over four, then omega is equal to zero. That is actually the critical moment the system stop oscillating. Okay, so it, it's not oscillating anymore. Okay, so now I can actually start uh, from, uh, from the solution I obtained from, from one, okay? Then I can actually now use, make, make use of this, uh, uh, these two solution, theta plus and the theta minus. Theta plus P will be equal to exponential minus gamma over 2T cosine omega T. When omega goes to zero, okay, what is going to happen is that this is actually becoming which value? Anybody know? If omega is zero, what is going to happen? One, yeah, get okay, one, right? So that will give me exponential minus gamma over 2t, theta minus t. Okay, I can do the same trick and see what will happen. So I take theta minus t, okay, which is actually obtained from the exercise number one when we discuss on the damp system. Then you guess you get exponential minus gamma over 2t sine omega t. When omega goes to zero, actually I get zero this time, okay? So that doesn't really work, right? Because if I have a solution which is zero, then it's not describing anything, right? I can always add zero to, to the solution, but that doesn't help you, okay? So instead of uh, taking the limit of this, uh, this function, actually we choose to actually do theta minus t, divided by uh, omega, and then we actually uh, make this uh, approaching, uh, omega approaching zero. Then basically I get exponential minus gamma over two t sine omega t divided by omega, okay? If I have this approaching, uh, omega approaching uh, to zero, and this is actually roughly just exponential minus uh, gamma over 2t omega t, omega, and this is actually giving you t 
times exponential minus gamma over 2t. Any questions so far? Oh, yes. Uh, this one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so it should be uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, this is a negative sign. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. So you can see that now I arrived two solution. One is actually proportional to exponential minus gamma over two t. The other one is actually proportional to t times exponential minus gamma over two t. Okay. So you can see that the cosine or sine term disappeared, right? So that means it will never oscillate, OK? So this is actually what we see uh, in this slide, this so-called uh, critically damped, OK? When actually uh, omega 0 squared is equal to uh, gamma squared uh, over 4. And you can see that what is going to happen is that uh, this mass, OK, or this uh, rod is going to pass 0 only one time at most, OK? And it could actually never pass 0 if you actually set up the initial condition correctly, OK? So, so one, one thing which I can do is I, I, I really shoot this um, mass really, really uh, very forcefully so that I have a very large initial velocity, and what it actually it's going to do like the right hand side diagram is that oh you will overshoot the zero a bit, then goes back it, almost like exponentially. Okay? So at most you can only pass through zero one time if you do this uh, kind of initial condition. Okay? So that is actually uh, pretty interesting and uh, uh, there are practical uh, uh, application of this uh, function, uh, this uh, solution actually. So, for example, we have the door closed, right? So it's also here, right? The door closed. You would like to have the door go back to uh, the original closed the mode, the position of equilibrium position is really fast. Okay. So what you can do is really uh, design uh, this uh, door close so that it should actually match with the critical damped situation. Okay, some good condition. So that actually you will go back to zero really quick. Okay? Any questions? Okay. So now what we could do is that instead of um, having a very small uh, drag force or, or say a slightly larger drag force so that actually it reach critical damped situation. What we could do is that we put the whole system into water, right? The, then the drag force will be very big, OK? And then we would like to see what is going to happen, OK? So in this case, is the third situation, OK? The third situation is that omega 0 square is actually smaller than gamma square over four. So you have huge drag force. OK? So that will give you a situation which is called over damped oscillator. Now I have, again, alpha is equal to i gamma over 2, OK, plus minus square root of omega 0 square minus gamma square over 4, right? I'm just copying from here, OK? And that will be equal to i, I, I can take out the i, OK, gamma over 2 plus minus square root of gamma square over 4 minus omega 0 square. OK? 
Now I can actually define gamma plus minus equal to gamma over 2 plus minus square root of gamma square over 4 minus omega 0 square. Okay? Then basically, the solution, okay, I, this is actually, uh, uh, now I already have the solution. So basically, the two solution will be looking like this. Theta of t will be equal to a plus some kind of constant, exponential minus gamma plus t, plus a minus exponential minus gamma minus t. Okay? Because this is actually becoming already, uh, okay, so alpha is actually i times uh, gamma plus minus, right? Therefore, you, if you put it back into this, then basically what you are getting is exponential plus gamma, uh, exponential minus gamma plus t, or exponential minus gamma minus t, okay? So that's already a real function, and the uh, linear combination of these two solution is our uh, final uh, full solution to the equation of motion. Okay, again, what we are going to see is that this is actually, the, the, the drag force is huge. I, I just throw the, the whole system into water, and the water is really stop, trying to stop the oscillation really uh, very much. Therefore, uh, you can see that, huh, again, I don't have any oscillation, okay? If I am very, very strong, I, I, I really start this thing, really, really, start the initial uh, uh, velocity or initial angular velocity really high. You have, I have, I, I actually give huge amount of energy into this system. Then at most, again, I can actually have that system to pass through the equilibrium position only one time. Then this whole, this system will, slowly recover, okay, because the, the gamma, uh, because of the, uh, uh, the exponential function we see here, the amplitude is going to be decaying exponentially. Okay, any questions? So that's actually uh, do a, a quick demonstration here, okay? So here, this is actually the original uh, little uh, 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 ball here, a uh, metal one, which is actually, you, you can see that uh, this is actually going to go back and forth uh, really uh, nicely. And you can see that because of the friction, okay, actually the amplitude is becoming smaller and smaller, okay? So that actually match with this situation, right? So it's actually uh, under damped situation. This ball is going to, in an idealized situation, is going to go through zero infinite number of times, okay? So now, what I'm going to do is that I change this ball to something which is different, okay? This is actually made of a mag magnet, okay? And uh, let's see what is going to happen. So now, you can see that because this is actually made of magnet, therefore the drag force will be colossal, will be very, very big, and then let's see what will happen. <laughs> you see that the, the drag force is huge. Therefore, you see, I, I put it here so that it has big initial velocity. It only pass through zero once. Right? Of course, it now it's actually approaching the zero really, really slowly, exponentially, but it's not zero, okay? So you know, only pass through the zero. If you believe the mass of only once, okay? Just to show that this is a real deal, okay? No, <laughs> right? <laughs> ah. Oh, I'm, I'm not trying to destroy the whole classroom, okay? Okay, so you can actually play with this uh, after we finish the lecture, okay? Uh, I would like to ask you a question. After we learn 
this, uh, from this uh, lecture. Okay, there are three situations, under -depth, critical depth, and over -depth. Okay, I would like to ask you two questions. The first one is through this demonstration. Okay, so now I have a system which is nicely constructed. I hope you can see it. Okay, you can see it. And uh, this system is made of uh, a, a torsional sp a spring, and uh, also there's a, a, a path here which is connected to the spring. Okay, if I actually perturb this thing, it's going to be oscillating back and forth uh, before I turn on the, the, the power so that you know, the lower part is actually, you, you have a, a magnet, okay? It's not turned on yet, okay? And this magnet is going to provide a drag force to actually change the behavior of this system, okay? So you can see that before I turn on uh, the magnetic field, the whole system is actually oscillating back and forth really nicely. As we predict, small uh, amplitude vibration is harmonic oscillation, okay? So that's very nice. So now, what I'm going to do is to turn on the power and see what is going to happen. After I turn on the power, there's a, mag mag uh, there's a, a electric field, uh, okay? Uh, and, uh, and this is actually going to be, uh, uh, okay, so, so the, mag when the magnetic field is actually turned down, therefore uh, it's actually acting like a drag force uh, to, to this system, okay? So let's actually see what is going to happen. Now I release this. This, this. The behavior of the system looks like this. It, it first oscillate, and then it stops. So the question is, is this a critical damped, under damped, or over damped system? Anybody knows? Uh, yeah. Yes, this is under damped. How do I see that? That is because when I do this experiment, you will pass through zeros multiple times. Therefore, there are oscillations coming into play. Therefore, I can conclude that the drag force is not large enough, so that is actually a down under damped situation, okay? And the next time, we are going to uh, drive this system. I have a second question for you. So now your friends know that you took AO3. Therefore, they were wondering if you can actually design a car suspension system, okay, to see uh, if you can actually make the design for them. When you design this car, which condition will you consider to set up the car? Will you set it up as a underdamped, critically damped, or overdamped? How many of you actually think it should be under damped? No, nobody. How many of you actually think it should be over damped? One, two, three, four, okay. How many of you actually think it should be critically damped? Okay, majority of you think that should be the correct design. So. If you have the car designed as an under damped situation, then when you drive the car, you are going to have very funny style. You are going to have this. <laughs> yeah, this is the, the style. So the, the car is going to be oscillating all the time, okay? Because it's going to be there and it's really damping really slowly, okay? If you design that to be over damped, it would be, become very bumpy, right? So, so let's take a limit of infinitely large drag force constant, okay? Then it's like when you hit some bumpy, <laughs> it doesn't really help you to reduce the amplitude, okay? So the correct answer is you will choose, you will give the advice that you will do it uh, 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 critically damped, okay? So before, we end uh, the section today. I would like to pose a question to you. 
The first, the, the thing we, we, which we have learned from simple harmonic motion is that the energy is conserved in the simple harmonic motion. Okay, I have the Fs, the spring force, proportional to minus k times x, and the energy is conserved, okay? But if I add the drag force in the form of minus b times v, energy is not conserved, right? So you can see that it was actually oscillating, now it's now oscillating, right? This thing is stop oscillating, okay? Why is that the case? Mathematically, okay? We know what is happening uh, physically, because uh, in, in this physical system, because, okay, this uh, Mexican hat is trying to push the air away. So what is going to happen is that it's transferring the energy from this system to the, to the molecules of, uh, of the air, okay? So it's accelerating the air, so the energy goes away. But why the mathematical form looks so similar and it does different things? And uh, think about it, and I'm not going to talk, uh, talk about the answer today. And uh, thank, you, uh, thank you very much, and uh, we will continue next time to see what we can learn if I start to drive the oscillator. Bye-bye. <laughs>